Okay, so let's see if we can answer these questions practically by using Packet Tracer. The first thing I'll do is power cycle the devices to ensure that the devices have just booted up. We'll need to wait until all the links have gone green before we can send a ping from PC1. Here's PC1. I'll open up a command prompt. IP address of this PC is 10.1.1.1. Default gateway is 10.1.1.254, which should be ISR router 1. Show IP interface brief shows us the IP address of the router. That's the IP address of router 1. The interfaces in Packet Tracer have now gone green, so I'll go to simulation mode. Edit the filters and make sure that only ARP and ICMP are enabled. Back on PC1, we need to ping PC2. In other words, 10.1.3.2. We can see in Packet Tracer that an ICMP message is being sent, but PC1 needs to know the MAC address of its default gateway. So the PC is sending out an ARP request. We can see in the output that the source MAC address is this. Destination MAC address is a broadcast. Source IP address is PC1. Destination IP address is the router. Looking at the outbound PDU information, we can see that this is an ARP request message from PC1 to a broadcast address. Source MAC address is this. Source IP address is this. Target IP address is this we don't know the target MAC address. So based on that, we can already answer some of the questions. I'll use capture forward to show that the message received by the switch and sent by the switch to the router looks the same. Op request message, destination is a broadcast address, source MAC address, source IP address, target MAC, target IP address. So to answer some of the questions, at which points in the network are ARP messages sent? So we already know that it's at point A, and it'll be at point B. Notice the ARP message gets to the router. So the broadcast is received by the router, but then the router is going to reply from its MAC address to the MAC address of PC1. So source MAC address is the router. We can verify that by looking at the interface on the router. So show interface gigabit 000. Notice this is the MAC address configured on this interface. I manually configured this MAC address on the router's interface. So the ARP message sent back is from the router's MAC address to PC1's MAC address. And we can verify PC1's MAC address by looking at the PC's configuration. Notice the MAC address of PC1. So ARP messages are sent at point A and B. The MAC address requested by ARP at point A is the MAC address of the router. We can verify that by going back and looking at the ARP request message sent by the PC. So on the outbound PDU, we are requesting the MAC address of the router. So this is the router's MAC address. We can see the reply to that by using capture forward and looking at the ARP reply message. The ARP reply message shows us the MAC address of the router. So that's the MAC address that the PC will learn. We can also answer question five, which asks what is the destination layer two address of the ARP request at point A? So the ARP request message at this point has a destination address of a broadcast. So question five, is a broadcast address. So the answer to question five is a broadcast address. What does the reply look like?
the reply message has a destination address of PC1. So again, what is the destination layer 2 address of the op request at point A? That's a broadcast. What is the destination layer 2 address of the op reply? That's PC1's address. We can see that again by looking at the configuration of the PC. And we can see that that's the MAC address used by the PC. We can also see that a layer 2 switches flood op request messages. Now in this example, the switch only has two interfaces, so it's difficult to see that. But it's important that you realize that op request messages are broadcasts, as we can see over here. Broadcasts will be flooded by a layer 2 switch. Have a look at some of my other videos and labs if you want to see that in more detail. So let's see what happens once the ICMP message is sent into the network. Packet Tracer shows us that this is an ICMP message. At layer 1, we can see the source address is PC1. Destination address is the router. Source IP address is PC1. Destination IP address is PC2. We can see once again that it's an ICMP message. So capture forward. When it gets to router 1, the packet is sent to router 2 without using op. Now, because I'm taking so long, this packet is expiring and will therefore be dropped. But that's only because of the timeouts on an ICMP message. Question 3 asks, what is the MAC address used by ARP at point C? Now, that's a tricky question. ARP is not used on serial links. ARP is used on Ethernet links. So there is no ARP message used here. But at point D, we can see that an ARP message is being sent into the network. Destination address is a broadcast. Source MAC address is the router. We can verify that by looking at the router's configuration. So show interface gigabit 000. This command shows us the MAC address configured on this interface, gigabit 000. So this is the router ARPing for the MAC address of PC2. PC2, once again, has an IP address of 10.1.3.2. IP config slash all shows us the MAC address of the PC. So router 2 is going to ARP for the MAC address of PC2 at point D and point E. That broadcast is going to be forwarded. So again, source MAC address is the router. Destination MAC address is a broadcast. Source IP is the router. We can see the IP address on this interface of the router. Destination IP address is the PC. Target MAC address is unknown. So back on our questions, what is the MAC address requested by ARP at point E? At this point in the network, we're looking for the MAC address of PC2. So for question four, the MAC address requested at point E is the MAC address of PC2. We can also update question one to say that ARP messages are used at point D and E. So ARP messages are used at point A, B, D, and E. They are not used at point C. So again, when that ARP broadcast message is received by the PC, the PC will reply with its source MAC address. Destination MAC address is the router. The PC is essentially telling the router what its MAC address is. So that allows the router to update its ARP cache, which means that an ICMP message from PC1 can now be sent 
to PC2 and PC2 can reply to that ICMP message. So this is the ICMP message received by PC2 from PC1. Notice source IP address is PC1, destination IP address is PC2. However, the source MAC address is router 2, destination MAC address is PC2. And when we look at the reply, source MAC address is PC2, destination MAC address is router 2, source IP address is PC2, destination IP address is PC1. And that will continue. When we look at the frame at this point, we see the source MAC address and destination MAC address on the inbound PDU, but note on the outbound PDU, there are no MAC addresses. MAC addresses are not used on serial links. When it gets to ISR router 1, inbound PDU is not using MAC addresses, but we can see the source IP address and destination IP address of PC2 and PC1. And on the outbound PDU, we can see the destination MAC address is PC1, source MAC address is router 1, source IP address is PC2, destination IP address is PC1. And that will continue until the packet reaches PC1. So the inbound PDU at PC1 has the destination MAC address of PC1, source MAC address is router 1, source IP address is PC2, destination IP address is PC1. So we've answered all the questions in this quiz. Were you able to answer all the questions? Do you understand how ARP works? Do you understand that MAC addresses are used on Ethernet, but not on serial links? Make sure that you understand ARP for the CCNA exam.